so I'm interesting to be back here. I've spent a lot of time in this beautiful church. It's a great thing to be here. Um, I was an altar boy here once, for well, quite a while actually, my mother made it. And uh, <laughs> Gerald Fitzgerald used to say, on certain conditions, we were waiting to take the collection of Sam's big brass plate and you see the light coming through the windows and dazzle all the old <laughs> <laughs> and nothing. <laughs> anyway, here goes. Um, June, Margaret Walker, our beautiful mother. June was born on February the 2nd, 1927, in Cameron. She grew up through the Depression years and then through the war years. She was the third of eight children. Her mother, my grandmother, was Susanna L Lydia Wallace, and her sons called her Lydia Teapot. She was remarkable and sacred. And she was a teacher, and she was an artist, and she was an important figure for two generations of us, and of course, very special to June. June's father, Olji, was difficult. He was the last of 16 children, and his mother left Olji's father for another man, that Frenchman, <laughs> as he was known. She returned only to take Olji to Tasmania, and apparently to a convent school she ran away from. He later returned to New Zealand, lied about his age, and at 17 years old, headed for the trenches of Europe. Not a recipe for a consistent husband, and so it proved. He was not a constant presence for the family, and as a mechanic and a machine operator, he worked in logging and dredge camps, road making in southwestern Jackson Bay and Cast and public works in Kaitaia and even Fiji. Um, however, he added spice to the mix. As for many in, in these times, life was tough, and Mum often mentioned cutting cardboard insoles for their shoes, and the family camping out at the railway station once when Algy was setting fire to the curtains at home, or mealtimes when he sold the company. Despite all this, they were a close, smart, and lively crew, always impeccably turned out and mothered. They were great. The family had moved to Hokitika where her aunts lived, and nearby, her aunts lived nearby, and especially Auntie Bitt, a seamstress, and she was an important influence on Mum's life, that Mum referred to her often. Mum went to school, and like her mother and half her siblings, June trained in Christchurch as a teacher. Her marriage to Eric, for 70 years, was made in heaven, well, actually at a country dance. They were such a complimentary team. I remember only two arguments. Once when Dad used her silver cake trowel for concrete <laughs> and the other when Dad decided to surprise Mum by repainting the bedroom an unusual, not previously known to domesticity, green. <laughs> it certainly did surprise her. You yeah, really can't sleep with that. <laughs> then do it yourself, dear. <laughs> Stayed that colour for a few days, then Dad relented. Mother could be firm, and she didn't have standards. Tragedy came hard with the early deaths of brother George and daughter Wendy. Both terrible events, but she took strength from them and carried on, and she never let it take hold of her. She welcomed the addition of Andy, Katie, and Jess into the phone now, and that has been a thing of joy and comfort to all of us. So thank you. Life spanned many phases and changes. I remember the outdoor toilets, and I remember George and John building Granny an indoor toilet to replace the families well used long drop. John sat on the chair reading the press and uh, George measured the event and that was the width of the room and that was my first architectural experience. <laughs> then there was Milkman and Billets running down the road to catch him. Mother's first washing machine <coughs> discovering detergent sold at petrol stations only. Bread and dripping is a treat. Cobbler Broil is not a treat. <laughs> Mother's beloved English magazines their conduit to another world of food, culture, and design. Adventurous cooking experiments with spices, oil, rice, only good for pudding, according to my father, <laughs> and fruit and main meals to the horror of my friends. And jovial, loud card evenings, which sounded so wondrous from our bedrooms, and with the promise of leftover tableau and soggy bandage stamps in the morning. It was a social life she had, and was a good one. It was the hallowed china cabinet which we went about to eat. 
It was their cake carrying contraptions for ladies to play to use, of which there were many. There were curried eggs, there was shopping with string bags, you know, you repair, bins of flour, repairing things, sewing, darning, knitting, and the knitting machine, with no millers or, um, or Addison's bought jerseys for us. Sports raffle books with cottonless stitching for perforations, knowing we just dispatch the neighbourhood with them. Mother's treasured community plate silver cutlery from Mother England, who, um, and they were ordered piece by piece. As she afforded them, she'd order one that didn't mother knife or another cup of tea. She's now got the pizza. There were adventures with Ibana and Hardanger. And she had a flower arrangement of gorse, which was huge and impressed and astonished. She was always curious and adventurous, and she was downright practical. Times changed. The 60s were one of total social upheaval. But unlike many, Mum took what she was given and offered no judgment, except for a continual pain to look at my hands. <laughs> but she made my bell bottoms, she crafted my corduroy jackets, and she knitted my skivvies with quiet acceptance. We knew she knew more than she let on, and she knew there was more, much more, than she would ever know. But we accepted that and we did. My sister's formerly thanked me for breaking her in. <laughs> but she gave us freedom, and she had acceptance and guidance, and she was not controlling. She was wise. Mention must be made of June's driving skills. They were few, <laughs> but they conducted the spree in fond. She missed our daily street driver when I was nine and hit a nearby power pole instead and I cracked the windscreen of the Ford 10 with my head. I still remember it. Later she took out the entire boundary fence. <laughs> she could park a car in half the time that anyone else could. The fact that it was angle parking in the parallel parking space was a bit of concern. <laughs> An officer of, office of the law followed her home from town once with lights flashing, sirens on, and Mum carried on and parked in the driver. Why didn't you stop? he asked because I hadn't done anything wrong. <laughs> According to him, she was driving erratically, so he recognised her. But the tea and scones from Darcy Davidson was getting better to him. <laughs> when her licence was renewed in the 80s, I asked, what about the others on the road, Mum? Well, I'll just have to be vigilant. <laughs> sport, of course, was everything, and generations passed through her and Dad's engagement with their many sports clubs, sports and clubs. Softball, tennis, cricket, athletics, and of course rugby, and those wonderful badminton tours to the Nationals. She supported everything, all supported from being club secretary, committee member, wrangler, taxi driver, chaperone, counsellor, and military extraordinaire. And, and people who we built it would come back and visit it for years later. All done with apparent ease and great fun. And to enjoy your sport was the whole point, and that was the joy of those people. To enjoy yourself, and they made it new. Remarkably, Mum fed us all full hot dinners at lunch times so we could spend the evenings in various pursuits and then come home to a cold evening snack in the suit. A measure of a person is in the friends they have, and Mum was fortunate and deserved the wonderful friends she's had and kept all these years, enriching and supporting. She treasured and enjoyed you all. It's by people we live, and it's by good people that we live well. She lived her life well. She was never judgmental, but she was careful. The house was always full of people dropping in, all ages and from anywhere, from next door to global, people whose old lives she defected, never forgot. Friends were friends for life, and she taught us the joy of people. Hey Tanaka, hey Tanaka, hey Tanaka. People, people, people. And that's what includes. She understood that. Teaching suited her. She always spoke fondly of her early teaching days, and later of her work at IHC, which she loved and found so rewarding, making many friends with both staff and pupils. And the number of cross section of people here today is testimony to her love of people and family. Her engagement with this church was lifelong and so important to her, as it was to her mother. Morning communion wasn't quite the joy to us teenagers as it was to her, but we always went with her as we knew how important it was to her. But Mum, as with everything, she, she, did, she took things to their roots and was an active member of Women's Union and many church committees and made many staunch and wonderful friends. 
through the church, who I have to say have been amazing support as is Eric in these last few years. Mum had a strong but private spiritual side which underwrote her life. So, June, Mum, after 92 years, this is your last service. You've earned it, a life well lived, you're now part of this, and we thank you and we love you for all your best. Maybe a couple of repetitions because Malcolm and I didn't confer, but I think she's such an important person it won't matter. <laughs> well, it's irrevocable. You don't get anything out of life unless you put effort in. And if you can't do anything about it, don't worry about it. And there's no point complaining about the weather, you can't change it. These were some of the sayings or journeys that mum was so fond of and would repeat often. These special sayings showed what a truly unique, sweet and special person our mother, wife, grandmother, great-grandmother, auntie, sister-in-law and friend June really was. She put a huge effort into her life and I believe she reaped the rewards of a long and fruitful life surrounded by her friends and family. She was utterly devoted to her family. Family was everything to mum and she has left a wonderful legacy to us all, which, apart from following her dunisms, is one of kindness, good manners, good grammar, a good smile, compassion, loyalty, generosity, and above all, love. As a family, we feel very privileged and grateful that we have had this lovely, gentle, kind person in our lives for so long. And she has been a huge influence in how we live our lives, how we treat other people, how we interact within our community, have good work ethics, values and love. Mum always had a great sense of humour and was very funny. Last year, in October, when she realised it was Dad's 94th birthday, she said, well, I must have been a good wife to keep him alive all these years. <laughs> Maybe it was the regulation glass of red wine they had each night, recommended by the Heart Foundation. Although, much to Malcolm's horror, it was cast red wine and kept in the fridge. <laughs> and when you would say to her, you would make her a nice cup of tea, she would say, well, how do you know it's going to be nice? You haven't made it yet. <laughs> Sorry, I was repeating the driving story, but never mind. And on our extreme apprehension, when she would insist on driving, she would say, well, the people of Hokitika will just have to be vigilant. And Mum would have an accident on her way to report the previous accident. So as you can gather, driving was not her strong point. However, she was always very grateful to Dad, who would never make a fuss, never growl at her, and would even quietly glue the dislodged wing mirror, yet again, back on with no more nails. Mum absolutely adored Dad. He was her profound rock and constant support and their unwavering love for each other was so lovely and endearing. She was always saying, and I mean always saying, I've got a good man and Eric is just marvellous. He just gets on and does things. She is quoted as saying in their 65th wedding anniversary newspaper article, we don't fight, we don't have words, and I don't nag. I can't abide women that nag. <laughs> Eric is very even-tempered, and I think I am too. Good on you, Mum. How nice. And we totally agree with that, apart from the wooden spoon incident. <laughs> 
She was a huge support for Dad in all his sporting pursuits, events, work commitments and family functions, of which there were many. Maybe it was Mum who put the fencing staples in the backs of the chocolate fish for one of their many games we used to play, especially at the reunion and anniversary parties. As a family, we were very privileged to celebrate Mum and Dad's 70th wedding anniversary on the 18th of May last year. A rare and splendid achievement. Dad organised the whole event, as he did with all their many celebrations. Mum dressed up for the occasion and, looked, and absolutely loved it. She loved clothes and loved looking nice. Mum was one of the old school, where she loved her home and was a wonderful homemaker or housewife, as she would have been in those days. She was a wonderful cook, nothing fancy, but good, honest, homegrown food, apart from the ghastly milk puddings that I disliked intensely. She sewed and knitted all our clothes, including my dance and ballet costumes, of which I was very proud, or were they for Malcolm? Sorry, a slight repeat here, but never mind. Mum was born in Cameron, just south of Greymouth, to Susanna and Algie Renish on the 2nd of February 1927, so she would have been 93 on Sunday. She was educated in Hokitika before embarking on a career as a primary school teacher. She trained at Christchurch Teachers College, boarding at Bishop Julius Hostel, a place that evoked strong memories and fun times. Her first job was teaching at Kaihinu School, but the arrival of three robust, highly intelligent and good-looking children, Malcolm, Julie and Wendy, ended her teaching career and allowed her to stay in the home and enjoy her homemaking duties. When we were older, Mum resumed teaching part-time at Hokitika Primary School, much to my horror when she taught my school, my class, I didn't know what to call her, so I would put my hand up and call out, hey, to get her attention. <laughs> she then took on the role of manager at the local IHC and loved it. She formed long-lasting and very special bonds with the clients and their families. She also used to supervise school certificate, university entrance and bursary exams, which we loved because it meant we would have pies from Percy Huron's pie shop every day. <laughs> Mum, you have always been a huge inspiration to us with your incredible love and devotion to your beloved family. We always loved coming home because you made it such a wonderful place to be. You showered us with love, good home-cooked food, warmth, and all the home comforts you could possibly give us. You were always fun to be with, positive, cheerful, and with a great sense of humour. You instilled in us all a strong sense of family, community, and love of people. That's how I could do my Queen Act, Mum. You taught me good grammar, diction, and voice projection. The Queen's English, in other words. You and Dad have always been very generous towards your family and we appreciate that very much. Throughout our different phases and ups and downs in life, you and Dad have always been there for us, giving us warmth, comfort, and a home where we felt safe, secure, and loved. Whatever the situation, slightly stretched during my hippie phase, I must admit. Didn't go down that well. We all thank you for the unconditional, wholehearted love you gave us. As you always said, I live for my family and my friends. On behalf of the family, I would like to acknowledge the following people. Nancy Pragnall and Thelma Tate, who have been stoic and unwavering in their love, support and care of mum. Thank you, you lovely, kind ladies. To Auntie Jean and Uncle Cliff, who have been fantastic and so helpful to Dad in the last few months. 
the late June Malloy, who was a great friend and provider of a myriad of wonderful things. To the All Saints Anglican Church, of which Mum was a long-standing and devout member. The church brought her great comfort and fellowship and was a huge part of her life. Thank you to all the parishioners and to Frances Stapleton and her group of ladies for their love, kindness and friendship. To Francis Gugish for his kindness and support for Mum and Dad and for taking Dad up to Grey Hospital to visit Mum. To Granny and Mum's family, who were a very close and loving family, except when Mum and her sisters hid in the long rock toilet to get out of doing the dishes. <laughs> to Jan, Mum's long-term carer, who loved Mum and bought more than just her job and her care of Mum. Mum's face would light up when Jan came into the room. Annie, Ted, Jess and Katie, your support and care of Mum has been truly amazing and exemplary. And we thank you, we all thank you for that. And Annie, your nursing skills have been invaluable. Thank you. Emma, Chris, Thomas and Henry, who have always been there and have been a huge help, especially in the IT department. <laughs> Apologies from Matt, Mel, Esme and Josie who are sorry they cannot be here, but send their love to all. To Auntie Anne, for being the lovely, kind, gentle person she is. And to Kay and Vaughan for being there as support for Mum and Dad. And for taking Auntie Anne to the hospital to visit Mum. A special thank you to Vaughan for the beautiful visual tribute you're about to see. And the song is by Maharinga Toka whom my mother has met and adored. They had a lovely um, little time together, so it's very fitting, the song. To my lovely children and grandchildren, Josh, Amy, Isaac, Carrie, Zoe, Serena, Poppy, Max, Nia and Penny Rye, who all utterly adored their beautiful manner and who has always been there for them. Mum absolutely adored her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren and would always ask after them and care about them. To my lovely husband, Clarky, who absolutely loved Mum and has been so supportive and helped me through so much through these difficult times. To Malcolm, Di, Curtis and Polly, you have been truly amazing and it's so lovely that we have each other to share our immense love for Mum and our special memories. And to Dad, Dad. Thank you to Dad for being the stoic person you are and the wonderful husband you were to Mum for over 70 years. You did a sterling job caring for Mum with her dementia and struggles and you were always there for her. As she said, she could not have had a better husband you always said you would look after each other to the end, and I think you can be very proud of what you did for Mum. Thank you, Dad. To all Mum's many friends, relations and neighbours, thank you all for your kind friendships with Mum. I know she treasured her friends immensely and loved you all. It has been a huge comfort to Malcolm and I, who don't live here, knowing Mum and Dad are in a small, caring community, where friendships are enduring and people really care. Thank you again. Rest in peace, our lovely sweet mother. Thank you, Malcolm and Julie. Just wonderful to hear that story of the special moment. I'd now like to ask granddaughter Emma to come up. She has a message from her brother Matt in the other side.
Granddad taught us how to play all of the sports. Nana showed us how to bake, but most importantly, spent a lot of time with us. We had the most amazing experiences and went on some epic road trip adventures that we were treasured forever. Nana had a quick, cheeky wit and no nonsense, down to earth advice. She also made the best sponge cake and all this her dearly.
from St. Luke chapter 2, reading verses 29 to 32, and ending with a Gloria as it is said every day in the Anglican Church throughout the world. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us now sing the Association of Anglican Women hymn, and the hymn brochure. I know June just loved this hymn of the association.
to and another recipient of Jim's Kieran walk and my walk with Christ. She's been a great support to me.
as she awaits resurrection into the mysterious eternal love of God. Until we meet again, June, rest in peace, and may light perpetual shine upon you. their trust in you and their hope in your grace and compassion. Use us, Father, as bearers of your love to support them in your work. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as the Lord teaches us, we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And give us our trespasses, as we will give them as trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the commendation. stand at this point because we are at the most mysterious of life, which is the doorway of death. And so we pray, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and prevent you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever and ever. May the angels lead you to paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you where Lazarus is poor no longer. May you have eternal rest. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth we shall return, as you ordained when you created us, saying, dust you are, to dust you shall return. We all go down to the dust, and weeping at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. Amen. As the casket leaves the church, Annie's children, Katie and Jess, will talk about it for us. And we now sing, Praise my soul, the King of Heaven.
Spanish. <laughs> It was turned on, but it just wasn't turned up. our God and to the Lord's most gracious mercy and protection we have entrusted our sister to and we now commit her body to the Lord with strength and peace and may we that we may greet the break the breaking of tomorrow's dawn. Amen.